Gail Saunders here with the homie Trox, and we are talking the path to 53, talking the quarterback position. I, I know uh, the quarterback position is a hot topic right now um, with the Philadelphia Eagles and their fans. Everybody is, uh, you know, wondering, uh, will Carson Wentz start? Will Nick Foles start? I mean, outside of Philadelphia, the, the pundits and stuff will say, Oh, there might be a QB controversy, but obviously we know that not to be the case. Uh, but first off, I mean, how did you feel uh, about, you know, Carson Wentz's MVP-like performance last season? Um, it, It's speechless how he just shot out of a cannon and never looked back. And the only thing that kept him back was an injury. And, you know, it sucks that that's what, how it happens in this sport and any sport. Injuries are always going to be there. And uh, I, I don't think it matters who the quarterback is for this team right now. The, 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 unity, the unity that these guys have as a team, it's like I, I, I've never seen anything like this, to be honest with you. On and off the field, these guys truly are friends with each other. And yeah. I'm, not, I'm not just talking to quarterbacks. I'm talking about the whole team. But these quarterbacks, it's, it's a special group. And you know what? There's something that, you know, number number 11, number nine have with each other that not many quarterbacks can handle that. And you know what? I, Unless there's something we don't know in closed doors that <laughs> where they really chip at each other, they, they just seem like they truly do love each other and they want each other to, to succeed if they have the ball in their hands that Sunday, no matter what. You, you talk about that, that situation between Carson Wentz and Nick Foles. Uh, it, it became where... You know, Carson Wentz had to become that second pair of eyes for Nick Foles, a guy who was, you know, was injured uh, during the uh, start of camp last season, uh, had the shoulder thing. Uh, and then he had to revert to being like a coach. in, like I said, the second pair of eyes for Nick Foles. And then kind of, they, they developed this relationship. And it seemed like it got stronger and stronger as the two progressed through the playoffs. But, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, Zach Ertz had mentioned it about, you know, uh, the relationship between Carson Wentz and Nick Foles, a big thing has to do with is their faith. Uh, they both are strong. They got strong faith. Strong, strong faith. believers. Yes. Um, and if that works for them, that's that's great. And that's great for us as Eagle fans to have that kind of cohesiveness in the locker room. Um, but, you know, Nick Foles, I mean, let, for a second, let's talk about, Nick Nick Foles' performance in the playoffs. I mean, how did you feel about what you saw from Nick Foles? Absolutely, absolutely shocked. <laughs> how bad they beat that defense against Minnesota. I he played out of his mind the last, basically through the playoffs. I was scared shitless after that Raiders game. I ain't gonna lie with you. <laughs> after that Raiders game. I was scared shitless, yeah. you know. I was like, "Oh, great, we're gonna we're gonna get a bye, and then we're gonna lose lose in the second round." Or you know, the negativity came out of me, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, I had no confidence in him after that Raiders game. Yeah, I know it was cold as hell that night. The ball was throwing like a ten pound rock, but it, it just scared me. He didn't look confident at all out there. And then I don't know what it was. Faith, the switch. I don't know. Carson Wentz talking to him, coaching him. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. These guys have a bond where it's like they can get through whatever gets in front of them no matter what. So, yeah, it really is like 15, 20 years from now, the Nick, Nick Foles story is going to be the, the next Invincible movie, <laughs> like from the beginning to the end. Like, you know, it could start off when Jeff Fisher's on the phone with him on the hard knocks telling him we're going to have to let you go, Nick. After he just asked how his vacation was, you know, what I mean? like something that raw came out and how much more he's sitting on top of a pedestal after all that saying what now? Yeah. It's it's amazing. And you know what? He, he's so he's satisfied with his career right now where he's doing whatever he can to stay on this team this year. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't be surprised if he's not on this team by the end of the season. I don't know why I think that, but I do. Cause I think they have confidence in the number three quarterback, Mr. Sudfeld, not in, in ink third string quarterback. Cause you know what? We do have a little bit of a competition between the, the, the bottom two, Mr. Callahan and Mr. Sudfeld, but yeah. Yeah. Sudfeld's got an upper, he's got an upper hand. So yeah, I, I think there's, there's a, there's a part where, you know, you know, in, in a perfect world, 
you know, the Subfo plays out of his mind in training camp. And, uh, you know, he, he looks way more than serviceable. Uh, he looks every part of what they expected from him and what they talked about him last season. But, you know, have, having a guy like Nick Foles in your back pocket has got to make you sleep easy at night. I think uh, what he did for the city, I think, you know, is amazing. Uh, like I talk, like we're going back to the playoff run where we're talking about Foles, you know, prior to the uh, playoffs, I thought, you know, the cold weather aside, you know, the players that were playing, the quarterbacks that were playing against him, Derek Carr had a bad performance. Dak Prescott had a terrible performance uh, uh, against our, our, our third string and second string. Um, but I feel like the Eagles were not showing everything. Um going into the playoffs. They were keeping some things back. They, yeah, I got, believe that. They got those RPOs flying um, and played to, play to um, Foles of strength. But um, like you said, I mean, if if they let if they traded him, um, you know, I, a lot of people would be against that. Um, but you would be okay with it. Yeah, I would. Okay. We had- Are we talking, what, second round, first round, first round? Well, a four waiting for an injury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I bet you Howie's like, yeah, there'll be a quarterback injury this year, and somebody will call asking about Nikki. I, gu- I guarantee it. It happens every year. What? At least three, four major quarterbacks go down, or or you know, top twenty-five quarterback. You might have one or two go down, but quarterbacks get injured. They get banged up, and yeah. you know what? We got the best backup quarterback in the league, I think, with a Super Bowl in his back pocket. I mean, I mean, if, well, you know, <laughs> if they could perform an, an, another Sam Bradford type fleecing, that would be amazing. I mean, I mean, that would be, you know, it'd be like be... Living, living, getting the lottery twice in in one year. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like going back to uh, you know, talked about competition on the back end of the QB position. It's really basically Sudfeld and Joe Callahan. Honestly, you got to look at Callahan as, you know, you always bring in that camp arm. You, you don't want to tire out um, Carson Wentz. You don't want to tire yeah. out Nick Foles. So you got to get somebody in there. I mean, so Joe, Joe Callahan, um, he was one of the first quarterbacks uh, in D3 history to pass for 5,000 yards. Um, yeah, he would. It was a single season game. It was what? Uh, 633 yards and eight touchdowns. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, so, you know, he, he – he, he spent some time with the Saints. Uh, yeah. play, what, played two with stints the, with the Packers. Then he yeah. get drafted by the Packers, and then he went back to the Packers after the Saints yeah. or something like that. He yeah. got he got one uh, regular season game um, with the, with the Packers at the end of the season. Um, but I think I think Callahan, you know, he's got some experience. Um, he's got some grit. He's got some grit. Yeah, I mean, like, for, like he's a he's been a fighter, under, underachieving. What what was he? D D two D three D three. Yeah. You know, he, he he set some records in those years in D3. I, think, I mean, he was the MVP of the uh, Division Three level uh, yeah. in 2015. You think about, you know, for him to be on this level, you know, this he's going on his, like, what, uh, fourth, third, fourth year. Uh, that, that says something. Uh, he's a local guy as well. That's what I was about to say. That's the goal. That's a nugget right there. That's a chip yeah. on the shoulder. That's another local guy that loves these birds, and he wants to make a roster spot on this team. So, I mean, that, you know, yeah. that's where the extra grit's going to come in from him. But, honestly, unless he shows something like crazy, uh, you know, they, they love Nate, I think. I think they love what yeah. they can be as a backup in this league. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I really feel like the third-string quarterback will be Sudfeld, I think. Uh, yeah. You know, another guy that they just can keep on uh, developing. Um, you know, he, he when he, you know, when he played against the Cowboys, and it was, I'm I'm being honest, it was, he didn't look that comfortable. But you know, no, he he, we looked, were, he looked fine. But but as us fans, we were dissecting every move because we wanted to see what this kid could right. do. But I, you know, but yeah. I'm but I'm just being honest in the sense of the people that were calling for Nate Subfeld at the end. Of oh well season they're trolling they, man they, they, there were people that there were people that I was like are you serious man I, I mean, never took any of them people serious I, I was like you trolling I was I, I mean some people really felt that serious and I was like dude no no 
Like, I am not starting Subfell in the first no. game. In the play- like, no, no. No, no. Um, it, it, I mean, Nikki's Nikki scared us, but there's, that's another reason, too, people. Yeah. They were scared. They were just scared. They were like, all right, we got to go with this guy because this guy sucks right yeah. now. Like, that's basically how the, the coin flip went on that whole situation. So, but I'm, I'm glad yeah. they, 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 you know, I'm glad the fans aren't, you know, the coaches on the field uh, and putting these guys on the field. You know, overall, I think, you know, if we're, we're going to uh, talk the – the real nuggets and the meat and potatoes of you know this QB um, depth chart. It's I mean it's it's really about Carson Wentz. Um, it's really about Carson Wentz's ability to come back from injury. The status of where Carson Wentz is at with his injury it means the world to where we're going to go this season. Uh, so I mean, honestly, are do you do you want to? St- go with Carson Wentz week one or you even if you know like they're gonna say he's he's a hunt like close to 100% um, but are you wary of starting him week one or would you like to wait a week or two after the, the first week I mean like I said if he's cleared and he says he's ready then let the kid ball but if you're gonna tell me he's not gonna take one snap one snap in the preseason He's not going to take first team snaps. Like, well, today he said he was with the first team. They, a lot of uh, reporters were saying he was showing off his arm strength today, where yeah. he was picking. He, he looked good. Defense up. He was picking the defense apart. And uh, I, I caught the last forty five minutes of practice yesterday, but I was watching from the bushes, and uh, I could see he, he had his hand in his helmet the entire time. But um, most of the reps were going between uh, Sudfeld and Callahan. The last forty five minutes that I caught, but it was. I could just see it the way they all, the four of them right now, even though Callahan is this new, new guy of the group, how they all just form together as a solid group and they're always picking each other apart with what they know they're doing when they're on the field. Like, that stuff's great. I mean, you see you see other other teams, you might have a quarterback where he won't tell a guy what his flaws are. You know, like, let him figure out himself. He's worrying about himself. These guys truly, I don't think, worry about themselves being selfishly they they truly are work, trying to help each other out but I mean, it's not you know, it's, yeah. it's not it's not a far like Aaron Rodgers relationship no he's not at all yeah yeah you know yeah you're least, right yeah you know there's some uh cohesiveness within that group I mean that's what makes you sleep at night uh me personally I feel like you know if Carson Wentz is not uh you know 100 percent or you know or close to 100 percent and he doesn't start we start week one I'm not going to be upset because I'm, I'm let, thinking, I'm thinking let, future of this team. Let Nikki play. Let him play up that stock. Up that right. stock for that true. midseason. That is true. true. Yeah, he balls out three and zero, and Carson's ready. Like, sorry, Carson's going in. You're yeah. gonna be three and zero, nice and polished. Look like a but, golden nugget. Yo, but, 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 I'm honest, on the show. <laughs> part of me is like, I don't want any. I, I don't want any parts of trading Nick Foles. Uh, I don't care about. Like, I don't. I, I don't really care about getting that. No, I mean it'd be as a draft head. It'd be nice to get extra draft picks because that's all, yeah, of course, it's what it's all about. But I'm more about right now is I'm more focused on re- repeating. Now uh, I know if I okay, know. Well, I, here's this. Here's this, Gail. Foles um, starts the season. He goes. Say he goes three, three and one. Week, week. Uh, that following week, are you are you playing once? He's clear to go. He's good to go. Yeah. Are you just? Or, or okay, our other scenario: say, say Foles goes three and zero. Are you just gonna let Foles play until we fall until he falls? No, it's once the team. I know that. But know Fo- that, and, Fo- but, yeah. and Foles knows his lane. That's the thing. Like, okay, okay, yeah, I, okay. Now, nah, bro, I want him on the <laughs> sidelines. Yeah. It, but you know, in, in closing, I mean, speaking of sidelines, well, sort of sidelines, you were kind of on the outs outside of the sidelines. Uh, yeah, man. What you never you never went to a practice and looked through the bushes before? Oh, I mean, that's get out of here. I no. mean, you were making little waves <laughs> on the TL. I mean, uh, well, well, I, was, uh, I, yeah. I mean, break I, it down for us. Well, I, I I drive. I work for a company. I do a lot of deliveries, so I'm up and down in South Philly or I go to North Jersey. So yesterday afternoon, I'm in Princeton, going back to my shop in Warmster, and I get the call from the guy in South Philly. He goes, uh, "Can you do a delivery Friday morning?" And it's like almost twelve o'clock. I know the practice starts at twelve. I'm like, um, no, but I can, I can come now. <laughs> I can get down there now. So I got down to the maybe one thirty. I got down there yesterday. I knew practice was going to about two o'clock. 
So I parked my truck around the block by the CVS and I went over and got a good spot with the, the bushes. You know, you got to get, got to get two sticks through there and you got to spread them. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got perfect view of it. And I wasn't the only one. There was a couple other guys there too. All but, right. Uh, you know, I, I did all that. I, I saw the last, maybe I saw a good, like 20, 25 minutes and I'm actually doing drills and they were going right at us for a little bit. And then now they were going the other way and then they're going the other way. I could see everything, you know, I got Carson and Foles right there in front of me. I got Dougie P right there. They got the offense going that way. And, um, so, all right, I got a couple videos and then I went back to my truck, you know, I'm driving back on broad to go back to 95. And I'm like, nah, screw this. I pulled my truck up on the curb right where I was at next to the fence. And it's a box truck. And, I got on top of the box and I stood up on the box. And as I got on the box, the, I could see the whole field perfect, clear as day. And the team was just going into a huddle to finish the, the, the practice. They had their group huddle. As soon as everyone's all quiet in the huddle, I'm standing on top of this box. And I just let out the biggest Eagles chant. And it just echoed across the entire field. Everyone looked over at me. <laughs> and I got a couple of years. I got a couple of years and all that stuff. And then I got, I'm driving back in 95 and I saw that. Um, the bull Scott, he, he took a picture from being over there with the media and you just see me above the bushes. And all of a sudden it says, dude climbs the fence to do an Eagles chant at the end of practice today. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like, I didn't climb the fence, but anyway, and then, and then Mark Farzada was cracking up cause he did a tweet about it saying that this dude climbing the fence, let off a loud Eagles chant yeah. at the end of practice. So, you know, Trox made his mark. It was great. It was the first day at camp. Wait, so, you know, so if we were technically you didn't climb any fences, you were on your no, truck. No, I was on my truck. See? I you didn't were... climb nothing. No, right. I didn't. There you go. Yes, that's key. That's key. That's key. My, car, my truck parked on the side of the curb. I mean, I might get a parking ticket, but I was only there for 10 minutes. I was in and out with the truck because I didn't want to get a ticket or anything else happened. But, yeah, I just hopped right on top and it was boom, right there. It was perfect. Yeah, I should have did it real. I should have did it earlier and got more video of live actual practice. It's all good. Like, we, we we don't want to get in trouble here. At <laughs> That's Street. exactly. I didn't want to get in trouble. That's why. <laughs> we we just want to uh, shed light. It was a it was a feel good story. Um, but uh, any any part, it was fun. Any parting uh, thoughts from you about uh, this QB group? This QB group. I mean, I have like I just said earlier. I have all the confidence in the world in this group. Between our one and two, I don't really care who starts the season of course we want once out there i want once there everyone in this world that's an eagles fan wants once out there even those Foles lovers even if they don't want to admit it they want carson once out there week one as much as they love nicky and they're devoted to him after what he did to us i it's just that's how can you not be excited and how can you not be confident this year we're super bowl champs and we're going back with a repeat and this team is st- that we, we, we just we just talked about the quarterbacks we didn't even talk about this offensive weapon that we have that's going to produce points this season like uh, and that, these quarterbacks are that reason on top of these weapons that are around them so you know how yeah, can you not uh, be, yeah. Now, i'm just gonna read <laughs> what what you're saying you know like you know and, and there's so many we- like this at the end of the day it's really about this team like and, and you mentioned them being in being in the video about this team it's it's really special uh, you, you, it's like I like I said be, during uh, last season. I had never seen an Eagle team like this, so cohesive and so uh, you know team in every sense of the word. So seeing these guys perform week in and week out, um, I wasn't you know by mid season I wasn't I was already SB wording it. So I, I feel like if they have that same kind of chemistry with some of the weapons that they uh, got in the off season. I think we're good, man. Um, but Trox, let the viewers know where they can find you on Twitter. Uh, at Dustin Troxel, at Trox. You can find me on Twitter. I'm that guy behind the camera that makes the magic for you fellows every Tuesday night, and I love it. Yeah, buddy. Uh, and, yes, sir. And you guys can find me at Eagle Sessions on Twitter. Uh, we'll be, you know, me and Trox, E. Uh, Hall of Fame e- next week, brother. I be I be I believe Philly will all be out uh can can't next uh, next week. You're um, gonna get tired of my ugly mug this week, man. We're so, spending too much time this week, all five of us. <laughs> yeah, man. But uh Trox, I can't wait. Thanks for uh joining us. Uh but for me and Trox, we're fourth and John, and we will see you guys soon.